Today, we're making sweet potato noodles, Korean chapche. If you've had this dish, you know how delicious it is, but you probably never knew how easy it was to make. Well, you're about to find out. Let's prep our vegetables, of which we need half an onion sliced, a carrot, peeled and julienne, and by the way, make sure to learn from a real chef on how to do this because I have no idea what I'm doing, some Chinese leeks, which you can substitute with green onions, and finally, some mushrooms. I'm using maitake, but you can use shiitake, enokitake, or any other take you'd like. And here's the star of our dish, sweet potato starch noodles. These are called dangmyeon in Korean. They've got a translucent appearance when cooked and have a pretty firm bouncy chew. Because of that, you have to cut the noodles into a shorter length. Trust me, it'll be really hard to eat these if you don't. I'm using a pair of scissors, which is like the Korean kitchen super tool. Honestly, they use these to cut just about everything in the kitchen. After that, toss it with some sesame oil to add fragrance and to prevent it from sticking together in a giant clump. In a frying pan, add a bit of sesame oil and cook your vegetables over medium heat. Now, as you'll see, the vegetables all get cooked separately and then removed from the pan. The carrots get a quick saute and come off, then the onions, and so on. Now, I'm not sure about the exact reason, and when I asked my mother-in-law, she didn't know either. My best guess is that you want to preserve the crunch of some of the vegetables, like the carrots and the onions, whereas something like the leeks need less time to cook, and the mushrooms, on the other hand, need a lot more time to cook. But honestly, if you need to get dinner on the table ASAP, then you can just go ahead and cook everything together. Next, we're cooking some pork to go along with our noodles. Now, I think beef is more commonly used, but this is what I had on hand, and honestly, you can use any kind of meat you like. Now, I've seen some people marinate their meat beforehand, which you can certainly do with some soy sauce, sugar, sesame oil, finely minced garlic, and green onion, but if you don't have time, then just cook it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Now, finely mince up some garlic and cook it with that sesame oil until it gives off that crazy delicious scent. Then you're gonna add in some soy sauce, sesame oil, and sugar. I've got some basic measurements for this recipe in the description below, but honestly, Korean food is all about eyeballing the ingredients. As you get better at making this dish, you'll definitely find yourself going off of taste and sight. Now the noodles go in and they get mixed in that delicious sauce. Interesting fact, chapche was traditionally enjoyed exclusively by Korean royalty. These days it's enjoyed by everyone, rich or poor, but it's still special enough to be served during important occasions like weddings, birthdays, and holidays. Next, throw in the vegetables. Since they're pre-cooked, we just want to get them mixed in well with the noodles. And then we add in the meat, which doesn't need much time on the heat either since it's already fully cooked. The beauty of cooking everything separately is that we can get the best texture out of each ingredient. This Korean pancake goes so well with these noodles. Make sure you check out that video and I'll see you in the next one.